Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Robert. I know you can't answer back, but it's nice to see some familiar faces um, from various organizations and such like. We're just in the middle of admitting people into the webinar and we'll begin in uh, a minute or two, hopefully. Uh, but it's great to see you all here. Paula's got a great introduction for you for UNESCO and Paul all about Orkney and wonderful environmental friendly things that he's doing in Orkney. So if you let me know Keith when we can start when we've got all our hundreds of people in. Yeah, you're good to go just now Douglas. OK, excellent. Well, firstly, good morning and a very warm welcome to members of Wild Scotland, the Scottish Independent Tour Operators Association, uh, members from the Scottish Destination Management Association and other trade contacts, including hotels, accommodation, national trust and councils. So it's great to have a, a wide variety for this Visit Scotland UNESCO Trail Trade Webinar and it should last probably about an hour. A little bit of housekeeping first. For people watching, your cameras, microphones and reactions are all switched off. And the webinar is being recorded and promoted across the corporate channels of Visit Scotland for anyone who missed the session. And as the webinar has been recorded, if you don't want your picture, avatar, name to appear on the recording, then you should leave the recording, leave the webinar. You can add questions to the chat function and that's visible to all attendees and we'll cover questions and comments in the Q&A session at the end of the presentations. So UNESCO is the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation and Scotland is the first nation in the world to create a UNESCO trail. Uh, it's connecting the 13 place based UNESCO designations across Scotland, which includes World Heritage Sites, the Global Geoparks, Biospheres and Creative Cities. And the good news is that we've been sending visitors to them for years. It also links in very well with Scotland's Year of Stories and helps with the dispersal of visitors around the country. Our two speakers for today are Paula Ward of Visit Scotland and Paul Hudd of JP Orkney, who offer environmentally friendly guided tours of Orkney. They have all electric camper van hire and sell homemade Orkney produce as well. So Paula will introduce Scotland's UNESCO trail. Uh, she'll share information on the paid activity plan for 2022 to promote the trail to UK and European visitors. An update about the new TMS, the tour management system functionality and the toolkit that has been produced to help businesses promote their UNESCO product offering. And also discuss how businesses can work together to make the most of the opportunities and about the creation of packages to sell to clients. And after that, Paul will talk about an example of a responsible tourism UNESCO trade product in action with JP Orkney. So firstly, I'd like to introduce Paula, who has spent the last 10 years providing strategic leadership as Visit Scotland's Regional Director for the South of Scotland and latterly as Regional Leadership Director for an area covering the South of Scotland and Edinburgh and the Lothians. And most recently, Paula has project managed the creation and delivery of Scotland's UNESCO Trail. So if I could hand over to Paula. Sure, so I'm just going to check that you can hear me, Douglas, and hopefully that means that everybody else on the call can also hear me. We can hear you. Great, OK. Um, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be with you. Thank you so much for attending this industry webinar. I'm going to spend about 25 minutes giving you a really good deep dive into Scotland's UNESCO trail. 
In the body of my presentation deck, originally I had two videos on testing them this morning. The UNESCO um, HERO video, which is a short one minute video, and the longer um, UNESCO in Scotland explained, which is slightly longer at six minutes. Unfortunately, our VPN network isn't stable enough for me to be able to play those videos as some scene setting for you today. So I've taken them out of my presentation, but I'm going to include them in the chat functionality as links to those YouTube um, videos that you can then watch after the session. So without further ado, I'll share my screen and hopefully the tech will hold up for the rest of the um, presentation. And I'll take you on a whistle stop tour of UNESCO in Scotland. Okay, so I just want to double check with Keith. Keith, you can see that yeah, and it's yeah, the first that's holding. Good, that's good. Great, okay, that's wonderful. And I'm just checking the transition that it transitions to and from. Yes, yeah. that's all good. Okay, no bother. Well, good morning. As I said, it's wonderful to be with you. So I work in the industry and destination development team at Visit Scotland and Paul Award. It's such a pleasure to be with you today and um, to dig into the detail of Scotland's UNESCO trail. Hopefully we're going to give you some inspiration. Hopefully we're not going to be teaching you things that you didn't know, but we're just going to be deepening your knowledge of how valuable um, these designations are to Scotland, the brand, and hopefully outline why this presents a once in a lifetime opportunity for trade and for new product development. So in terms of setting the scene, I'd like to just give you an overview of where this project came from. It was born in 2018. At the time, we have, were seeing significant growth in the visitor economy for Scotland. We had some acute issues in some parts of Scotland at peak times, and we were trying to address that by looking at regionally focused content. We wanted to disperse visitors across to um, other parts of Scotland to try and um, alleviate any problems that we had um, in high footfall areas. And we felt that Scotland's UNESCO trail would give us a new way of having a conversation both with our citizens, but also with fans of Scotland. So Scotland's UNESCO trail, if you then fast forward, um, it was launched in the middle of the pandemic. It launched in October 2021. It's the first national UNESCO trail anywhere in the world. So there's no other country that has brought together the full range of place-based designations. And as Douglas said, those are World Heritage, Global Geo Parks, Biospheres and Creative Cities. And no other country in the world has done it within the context of responsible tourism. So responsible tourism is the golden thread that runs through all of the assets and all of the partnerships. In order to protect the integrity of Scotland's UNESCO trail, we are prioritising green accredited businesses. Um, so I'll speak to you a little bit more about the mechanics of that later on in this session. All of the narrative around the trail is around encouraging visitors to slow down, to make ethical travel choices and to spend locally and to stay longer. So it's a truly unique partnership um, between the UK National Commission for UNESCO, Scottish Government, the 13 UNESCO place-based designations and Visit Scotland. It's also supported by a range of national agencies, Historic Environment Scotland, Nature Scott and National Trust for Scotland all have a custodian role that they play for many of the assets that are listed um, as part of Scotland's UNESCO trail. The next steps are around collaboration, product development and innovation projects with the industry. So trade, of course, is incredibly important to us. The aims and objectives of the project were firmly rooted in responsible and sustainable tourism. Um, 
right at the beginning of the project, I had sessions with UNESCO colleagues who had done similar pieces of work in other parts of the world um, where they had a European Heritage Journeys product and they shared information around best practice and sustainability and how they, how they built that inherently into their project. So in terms of the values, it, it meant that we knew from the get go it wasn't we didn't want to focus just on volume, the value of the visitor was going to be very um, important. The designation set what their definition of value. So the, defini the definition varies across each of the designations for some, like the geoparks and the biospheres, particularly in south of Scotland, Western Ross and Northwest Highlands. They do have capacity for more visitors, so they actually want to see more no more boots on the ground and more visitors coming into their designations and other designations for example in edinburgh they have certain peak times that they wanted to make sure that there was a dispersal and there was a seasonality message that was incorporated in places like dundee who are just up and coming designations and destinations they're growing they're thriving they've got room they've got bed nights and they're definitely looking to grow for others it was actually around their definition of value was to extend the network between and collaboration between the business communities. So how did the business communities engage with the, the designation? So furthering of that UNESCO values and those, those educational goals, collaboration with academia. For some others, it's actually um, around engagement with their story. So for example, St Kilda, very sensitive site. It doesn't necessarily want thousands of more visitors every year, but what it does is it wants a meaningful engagement with the visitors that are coming to know the story of St Kilda, to connect to the Hebridean culture, to appreciate that the Hebridean archipelago, it's not just St Kilda sitting in isolation, that actually over thousands of years it's consistently been connected to its Hebridean story and its Hebridean community. So each value um, really was defined by those. We had a range of other um, aims and objectives for the project. So we wanted to make sure that communities were showcased within the story of this project so that when visitors were going there, they were connecting in a meaningful way. We wanted to further the UNESCO values and we wanted to demonstrate both at a Scotland level and also each of the designations, how does Scotland take its responsibilities around the contribution to the UN Sustainable Goals seriously. And that's where we started out with how we wanted to speak to our audience and how we designed our digital assets for the project. So for those that don't know about UNESCO, um, we really started with the UNESCO values to tell the story of how the organisation began. So a little bit of scene setting. Um, it's the Second World War. Thousands of people are sacrificing their lives. Cities are completely decimated by bombs. Governments are in exile and the world has pretty much been ripped apart by fear. And from those dark ruins and that, those ashes, there was an endeavour to foster international cooperation and to make sure that racism and bias weren't allowed to take hold and that's where UNESCO began to take its shape. So you might have heard of UNESCO from a World Heritage perspective, but what does it actually stand for? Um, so it was founded in 1945 to foster peace. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization aims to bring countries, communities and people together. It has a global mission to promote and share and protect science, education and culture. And one way that UNESCO does this is by recognising, preserving and educating people about the world's most extraordinary places. And Scotland is full of them. So these are our designations. They are the length and the breadth of the country. I'll dig a little bit deeper into them. So. We have Galloway and Southern Ayrshire UNESCO Biosphere in the south, and then we have one in the Northwest Highlands, Wester Ross UNESCO Biosphere. Edinburgh, Glasgow and Dundee are all creative cities, one of literature, one of music, one of design. We have two global geoparks, one in Northwest Highlands, um, and then we also have the entire um, set of islands from Shetland are also designated as a global geopark. 
St Kilda is only one of a handful of dual designations in the world that are recognised both for their world heritage and also for their natural environment as well. Frontiers of the Roman Empire, the Antonine Wall, another world heritage site, the old and new towns of Edinburgh, world heritage, heart of Neolithic Orkney and the islands, again world heritage, New Lanark, incredible site, um, world heritage designation and the fourth bridge, um, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So these are important sites. They are amazing landscapes, breathtaking natural beauty. They're ancient archaeology, groundbreaking architecture. They are marvels, technological marvels. So it, it speaks to Scotland's ingenuity and it speaks to the fact that we have this treasure trove of natural gems um, and it's a really exciting country to be able to welcome visitors to because we have this span of time and these range of assets that go from everything from you know Neolithic Orkney and these these artifacts and world heritage right the way up to contemporary cities like Dundee that have just got this massive heartbeat um, of creativity going on. So, so what did we do? We built a business case alongside Scottish Government. We secured 360 grand. What did that allow us to do? It allowed us to build a micro site, which is housed within visitscotland.com. So in terms of the things that are going to be useful for you as product development and as trade, um, you've got over 500 new images that are now available to build online product pages, to put blogs together, to write itineraries, to create social posts, web pages and digital brochures. We've created 30 pages of detailed content on the micro site, so that gives a deep dive into each of the designations. So if you're looking to put together a multi-stop tour that would take in Edinburgh, Dundee, Northwest Highlands Geo Park, the Biosphere, and then on up into Orkney. Each of the designation pages provides you with useful information to be able to start to create that experiences or those experiences and that content. There's seven geographically based journeys. Those are suggestions. The thing about trade is I wouldn't for a second assume to know how your product works best, depending on what type of transportation you offer, depending on is it a one day tour, is it a three day tour, is it a long extended trip of a lifetime? You know that better than anybody. There are some suggestions on the micro site that you can get your product teams to perhaps look at and think, would that work for my business? And then there's also thematic journeys. So you've got last minute sustainable journeys, families and days out. So I'm just going to give you some snapshots. So you've got the trail information that's there, pinpoints on the map. You can see it spans the length and breadth of Scotland. So you could do it as day experiences just dedicated in Edinburgh or in Glasgow or Dundee, or you could do multi-stop depending on what your business model is. You could do it as um, wildlife experiences, mountain climbing experiences, it could be a day's kayaking in Western Ross Biosphere or in Shetland at the Geopark. We already know that there are businesses operating already within this space, but they perhaps don't have the UNESCO slant or that UNESCO story incorporated into the narrative that they're having with the consumer. And that's really what I hope today will motivate each of you as um, trades organisations that it, it might start to filter and it becomes an opportunity for you to harness. So I talked about the detailed information that was available on each of the designation pages. So here's just a little bit of a visual. What you can see down in the right hand side corner, you can see um, little purple tile cards for different businesses. All of the businesses that are in the local support local business carousels are fully um, approved as green accredited businesses. We are only prioritising businesses that are green accredited to pull through into this business carousel because it protects the integrity of the sustainability and the responsible tourism ethics of this project. 
you can see you've got detailed information on the designations and also information on the why you should visit. Each of the designation pages also speaks to which of the UN Sustainable Development Goals are most supported by this designation. So if UN Sustainable Development Goals are important to you at an organisational level in the way that you speak to your consumers, you'll be able to directly reference them. We also have best in class, which you can see on the bottom right hand corner. These are local businesses that are completely rooted within the UNESCO story and they're ambassadors. So again, if you're looking to identify a supply chain within the designations and create product, these are some of the businesses that you would be able to work with. And there's also information around there on UNESCO. So I had talked about the journeys again, and um, these are suggestions for consumers to do it directly so that they can do it as an independent plan. You may wish to change that up depending on how you know your business operates and what the behaviours of your own consumers are. So there's many different um, kinds. You've got Central West Scotland, North of Scotland, Central East Scotland, the South, um, we also have Outer Hebrides and the Northern Isles and of course the full trail. So Scotland's UNESCO trail has been designed to be a once in a lifetime experience. It's a trip of a lifetime and if you were to do it justice using slow travel as you'd approach to it, we anticipate it could be up to about 40 days that would be spent visiting our regions, connecting to our communities and buying from local businesses. There's also the option to extend and to then make this a regenerative um, tourism experience where you could come and you could do volunteering or you could do rewilding or restoration projects. And we know that those are taking place on the ground. So living like a local, giving back and genuinely connecting to Scotland through the Scotland's UNESCO Trail is going to be something that we hope um, will start to be filtered into the product development process. We've prioritised content that focuses on useful information really to allow visitors to engage with the trail but in a meaningful way and to have quite a sophisticated conversation with them. Um, we wanted to be able to share detailed information on how they can make good travel choices um, and any sort of um, ability to either donate to conservation or volunteering or restoration. So again that's been filtered into the content that we've created. And again, these are some of the other ways that you can experience it. So we've, we've, we've gone down some thematic routes and we're testing those out. So if we write a blog, how does it perform? If we're writing an itinerary, how is it going to perform? I thought it would be useful for this group in particular to understand that the development of Scotland's UNESCO trail and the digital assets was firmly rooted in user testing. So right at the beginning of the project um, in Late 2019, early 2020, we commissioned three sets of user testing to inform both the project aims and objectives, but also to test the theory that we weren't barking up the wrong tree. Would there be an appetite for Scotland's UNESCO trail? So the user testing was carried out in December and January to inform the creative brief for the agency and also to inform the industry engagement plans. So we carried out surveys and we got significant um, detailed feedback around that helped to guide the design process of the website and the digital asset. Here are some of the findings that you might find useful and some of the specific comments that came back was that users were looking, they were very interested in the trail. So 94% of all users were interested in following all or part of the trail. The breakdown of users was 51% would follow small subsections, so that might inform the multi-day approach. And 36% of users were interested in following the whole trail. 93% of users would consider a package option and they wanted indeed to have that provided to them so that it was it was easy. And what they've said is they want to consider 95% of those users that were tested 
wanted to consider their environmental impact when travelling. So, um, and I, again, we did one final set of questions around small um, or group tours and 48% of users would be interested in joining us at a small or group tour with a person who has knowledge of the UNESCO site. So the overall opinion of the trail was very positive and the majority of users that were tested were indeed interested in following the trail in some way, but they wanted it to be made easy and digestible for them. So when I first did a presentation to SDMA, it was October 2020, um, and we were just able to give an, an up. No, in fact, it wasn't. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was October 2020. Sorry, I'm losing track of years because of the pandemic. Um, we were able to give an update on the fact that some of this user testing had happened, but it, it came through so strongly that that's why we decided that we would run a trade webinar just now. So we've created a set of tools that will allow um, trade to engage with this opportunity. We've done some development work on our um, tour management system. You can now filter um, if you're a green accredited company and you, you have a green accreditation, you now are able to filter that on the TMS um, so that you are able to pull through onto the UNESCO designation carousels if you have a UNESCO designation product. We've created 13 highlights, um, one for each designation location um, in the drop down menus on the highlights section for where you would normally put your tour products or your experiences into the TMS. So again, you're able to create product and that will now pull through onto the business carousels in Scotland's UNESCO trail microsite. We're going to be working on new travel trade itineraries in 2022, and there will be farm trips and trade promotional activity that will take place in 2022 once we have more product um, developed. There's a £200,000 paid media campaign that is due to launch at the end of February, the beginning of March, and it will run through 22-23 financial year and it will be looking at regional UK markets. It will be looking at um, European markets, so Germany and France and Spanish markets. Um, the translations are just taking place for the content and the digital assets just now and we would plan to have any travel trade itineraries also translated into those languages as well. It will be woven through all of our core activity for the new Scotland is Calling campaigns, which will be going out to our long haul markets in China and North America, Canada, and then the, some of the emerging markets as well will receive um, Scotland's UNESCO Trail product updates as well. So there's going to be a concerted effort um, to make sure that we get good visibility. These are just some of the results that we've had so far. So bearing in mind, we launched on the 15th of October um, last year, really just as a corporate launch. Um, and we've been using our own channels at the moment to do organic promotional activity. And um, we haven't applied the budget that we've got for the paid campaign activity. So some of the, the um, coverage it's fair to say there's a significant appetite for this. There's a range of reasons. One, responsible tourism from an, from an agenda on the media perspective, it's high up on their agenda and they're actively seeking out information. So it landed very well when we did the consumer PR launch. And you can see just down in that bottom um, update how many pieces of coverage we've been able to have. The digital assets, again, we haven't done any um, traffic driving um, camp paid campaign activity as yet, and they're performing very strongly so far. The email opens have been very high, um, higher than what we would normally have. Um, so we're very happy with where we are so far, and that's without the, camp the paid campaign activity going live. So we are going to keep Q&A towards the end. Um, so if that's OK, I'll thank you for your attention and ask if there's any questions on 
the presentation or anything for me, if you could pop it into the chat with a queue at the beginning so that we can track the questions and we can do that in the Q&A just at the end. But thank you so much for your attention and I'll just end the slideshow just now. And Douglas, that's me stop sharing, so I'm just handing back over to you now. OK, OK. That's great, that's Paula. Great, Paula. Thank you very much Thank you very indeed. Much. I hope my mic's OK there. Uh, I particularly like the focus on extending the collaboration of businesses and organisations um, and connecting to communities as well. Uh, there's some sort of great info on the website links as well. And you're right, Scotland is an exciting country to welcome visitors to. And I love the idea of a 40 days tour to book for people. That was really good. Um, and it's great about the green accreditation focus as well uh, and the emphasis on the context of responsible and sustainable tourism, which leads us on very nicely to somewhere like Orkney and in particular to our next speaker. So I'd like to introduce Paul Hudd of JP Orkney. And JP Orkney are a family business They're run by Jane Allison and, and Paul Hudd. And they sell homemade produce across Orkney and through their online shops. Uh, they offer guided days out on their Orkney tours, which you'll tell us more about, and provide all electric camper van hire as well. Paul is a tourist guide accredited and qualified by the Scottish and Orkney Tourist Guide Associations. And he's also Director of Destination Orkney, which is Orkney's DMO, and is a Treasurer of the Orkney Farmers Market Association. So over to you, Paul. Thank you. Um, yeah, welcome to Orkney. Um, thanks, thanks for having me and for uh, listening to what, what I've got to say today. So as mentioned, uh, my name is Paul Hood. Um, and I'm one half of JP Orkney. Um, I've prepared a, a few slides for us. So I'm going to put them up now and, and I'll, I'll talk through a bit about what our business does, um, what the different offerings are, our work with green tourism, um, our work with the UNESCO trail um, and, and what's, what's in store for the future. So I'll just share my screen now so you can bear with me a moment. sun's come out and it's shining on my screen so it's making it a bit difficult to see I should be able to see there we go so hopefully you can see that is that all right that's good paul okay perfect thank you so yeah, so my name's Paul, Paul Hood, um, and I'm one half of JP Orkney. Uh, my other half, Jane Ellison, uh, runs the business with us. Uh, and you can see a lot of thought went into making that name, JP Orkney. Um, so we um, set up the business in 2017, um, and that coincided with, with a, sort of a lifelong dream of ours to, to move up to Orkney. Um, We've we both visited uh, the the place on holidays. Uh, James coming up as, as little as as a baby, um, so, so we've got great memories of Orkney. And, and like I say, it was a dream of ours to to move up. Um, we also had the idea of of what we'd like to do with a business. The the first one was was really to do the food and drink tours. So prior to to our move. We'd started to do a lot of research around what was an offer in Orkney uh, and it, it's, it's quickly apparent that there's some fabulous world leading producers up here. So we reached out um, and we started to sort of interact with, with the different producers on the island, build our network. Uh, the second idea we had was, was around motorhome rental. Uh, this was quite an interesting uh, exercise. We, we started off with a, a, a a company that sells motorhomes uh, and go motorhome shopping, which was a, uh, I, I guess I sound like a right geek here, but it is it is a good exercise. The the space saving tech and those things, some of the bigger ones are really impressive. Um, but we we spotted um, it was a, a prototype at the time, a Nissan EMV two hundred, which is an electric um, sort of seven seater vehicle, and um, yeah, we, we we saw that, and it was a prototype at the time. Um, but we, we kind of fell in love with it and we felt it 
it was a better option than than perhaps going down the diesel uh, route. Um, so it's better for the environment. So so from that perspective, we thought that'd be a real good fit um, when when they moved up. Um, so we put a we put an order in, um, and, and they told us that they would convert to the new battery and have it to us sort of 18, 19 time. So. It then comes to the big move. We, we looked at a few places and we're very lucky to find where we live today. Uh, it's a place called Bursey, which uh, the picture at the top right, Jane and I sat in the van, that's the, the Brock of Bursey. So our, our back garden looks out onto that view. Um, so needless to say, we snapped up the chance to to, to take that and, and we moved up. So once we've got to, to Orkney, the, the food and drink tours develop first of all. Um, and having seen the, the electric camper van, we, we were more familiar with the uh, the, the Nissan. So, so we uh, got a Nissan EMV 200 uh, seven seater to just do the tours in. Um, this had quite a few fringe benefits um, that we didn't realise at the time. One of them was the, the quietness of the vehicles. It's great for tours. Um, people can hear you speaking. Uh, also, if, you, if you're looking for wildlife and things and you, you, know, you don't want to scare things off when you arrive, um, th there's that extra benefit. Um, and the food and drink tours developed um, to the point where we were doing sort of full days out. Um, this would be getting in front of the makers, uh, getting tasters, things like that. Um, what we quickly realised when doing the, the food and drink tours and as well with the, the renting out the, the electric camper was that um, we were providing extras. So that would be in the, in the way they have little hampers um so some of the local smoke products were getting included um but then we were thinking how could we we can sort of bulk that out and that was where we had the idea to make our own produce uh, jane's background is, is as a food teacher so she's done that for 15 years so that was really helpful in terms of designing the products and making them work commercially um, I'm a greedy foodie, so anything to do with tasting food and, and enjoying food um, is right up my street. So uh, it kind of worked well. Um, and what we wanted to do um, and achieve was to do products that were um, seasonal and using locally sourced ingredients and suppliers. So we've kept to that ethos. Um, you, you'll notice in our product range, one of the, uh, the, the more commonly used fruits is rhubarb. Um, and that's uh, also because it's one of the things that grows here in abundance here in Orkney. Um, we don't do so well for fruit trees just because of the uh, the wind. But uh, yeah, we, we, we have sort of kept that ethos um, and, and we've, we've evolved. Um, so we now grow our own beetroot for our spice beetroot relish. Um, we grow our cucumbers in a, in a, in a polytunnel that we've had, we've had made. Um, and we use uh, ingredients from local suppliers. So our, our pickled cucumber, for example, it takes the junipers that are from the gin distilling process at Dennis Distillery, which is one of the local gin distillers we have here. Um, so we use the, the junipers to flavour the, the, the pickling liquor that uh, makes the, the cucumber. So we've always had this kind of um, for doing things in, in what we perceive as the right way um, and, and, and with as little impact as possible. So then we started to think of what are the benefits um, to us in terms of telling our story. And that, that's where, really where we came across uh, green tourism. So we were looking at different accreditations um, and, and green tourism sort of stuck out as the, 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 the market leader at the time. We started our journey with them in about 2018. Um, and that, that was just, you go online and you find a, um, a way to get assessed and you send off your details. And it was quite interesting, actually a bit of an eye opener for us because I don't, I don't know if we went into it uh, arrogant um, as such, but it was, um, you know, we had these this this green tech. You know, we've got uh, Scotland's only all electric camper and an electric tour vehicle. So I think we thought we'd, we'd sign up and straight away we'd get a goal. But it doesn't work that way. So the, the way the accreditation works is you can be accredited, then you can get bronze, silver, gold. Um, so when they came back with a bronze, we were we were mortified. Um, <laughs> but uh, we we worked out what what was going on here, and it was you got given a account manager. And they were there to help you and then when they look at it it's like yes you might have some some green tech already but what are you doing to um extend that what what extra things you add in you know so it's really about um what you're doing right time but what can you do better and that that's what was good about the the accreditation that's what we liked about it and um, we learned a lot um and, and we grew 
with with our, our accreditation. So, so we did it in stages. So we went from bronze, silver, and then, and then uh, last year we were accredited gold from from the work that we've done. Um, the the other benefits um, really to doing to doing it, other than the, um, the sort of the wider benefit to to the community and, and to the planet, um, is is commercially it, it makes sense as well. Um, so we we get a lot of um, people now or even at the start coming to us because of our accreditation uh, even this christmas we were doing um we, we do hampers as part of our product range we sell them uh, on an e-commerce site and we've had a had a lady ring me up and say she only chose our, our product because as you imagine there's a lot of competition she only chose us because of our, our green accreditation so it is nice to um to sort of get that feedback as well um and it shows i think that people are, are really focusing on on that now So because of the green tourism work that we've done and, and sort of the recognition that, that we've got in, we, we were approached by um, Visit Scotland um, to work on the UNESCO trail. Um, so you can see there's one of our vans next to um, the heart, in the heart of Neolithic Orkney. This is where we got the standing stones of Stennis and the Ring of Brodga. Um, so as a business, what we decided to do was we were doing food and drink tours, but we also thought we had this thought of when we're doing the food and drink tours, we're um, kind of limiting ourselves a little bit. Um, one a good example of this is uh, we, we took people to the Orkney winery. Um, I think it's the most northerly uh, wine distillery um, in, in the country, or winery, not distillery. Uh, and they, they do rum as well. They've got Jagau rum, which is named after a famous pirate. Um, Right next to it is the Italian chapel, which is a fabulous uh, building, uh, and it's it's quite clear from the outside there's something interesting going on inside. Um, so taking guests to so close to that, but then not to expand on that seemed a bit a bit um, a bit foolish. So we went back to school. Um, we just signed up with the Scottish Tourist Guide Association um, and the, the Islands, yeah, Highlands and Islands University, and you do a year's study to become qualified. Um, so. Yeah, we did that and it's qualified and then that opened more opportunities for us to be able to kind of expand what we were doing um, as, a, as a tourist guide in business. Um, and that really sort of fed in with what, what UNESCO is doing here. Um, so, so we could, you know, go to the heart of Neolithic Orkney, guide around the sites, but also add the, the, our, own, our own twist on this with, with things like the environmentally friendly um, vehicles that we were using. Um, produce that we're providing on the tours um, is all the packaging is uh, recycled, recyclable or compostable. Um, as well as that, we were creating the story. So when you go to Scarabray, you learn about um, the, the Neolithic people. They, they would have used um, bear in, in, their, in their sort of diet. And um, so we were providing food that, that, that features this. Um, and on the back of doing this, we, we, we've sort of gain further work so um we partnered with wilderness scotland um and we, we basically designed a part of their package that they were doing so they're they're already doing tours with small groups um taking them around around orkney as well as sort of coming up through scotland um and then they were going into the heart of neil of orkney they were taking the guests there and they approached us because they wanted to give an extra experience for the guests something that they wouldn't get just by going to a restaurant so we designed a picnic style lunch and that's featuring our products some other local produce and it's kind of telling the story the guests would come from scarabray they'd have learned all about the diet of the, the neolithic people and so we were we were trying to then impart that onto the the guests to, to sort of continue the story um the the setting was another thing that we were able to uh, sort of work on with, with wilderness scotland they wanted something that's um sort of living like a local i suppose the, the strap line is today but um it, it was it was in capturing that so we we found a um it's an old school hall so it's over it's about 300 years old um it's had all the windows and roofs done but they've kept the original features inside but but more importantly it overlooks um the island of hoy it's got some beautiful um uh, views to the entrance of scapa flow um so this is this is you know fabulous for the the, the guests that come into this but then meeting us the producer and uh, learning our story a bit about and more about the food and, and what, what's 
what's grown here and what you can do. Um, and it's a really good offering. And, and uh, yeah, we've had some fun days as well. Um, and the good thing was, obviously, with what's been going on, we, we was trialled sort of la- this last season, um, and we had good numbers on on the on the tours. Um, but the bookings for for this coming season are are pretty good, um, and I suspect it's going to grow more. So, from a business perspective, again, um, the UNESCO trails worked well for that, and it's it's sort of the but promoting collaboration with with businesses um, has has helped us certainly, and and I'll get okay, good feedback from Wilderness Scotland. So again, um, it's helped them. So so yeah, that that's that's a good news story that we've we've taken from from this. Um, so what does the future hold? Um, so there's, there's a little change since sort of um, doing the, the trail in terms of we've, we've actually decided to sell the electric camper van. Um, the reason for this is just we are, this is Jane and Paul, um, so having in effect free businesses is quite a lot, but we, we've actually, we decided um, it's better to, for us um, to reinvest um, so we're going to focus more on the tours and the produce. And to that end, the tours, we've now um, ordered, we take delivery, beginning of February, a nine-seater Mercedes EV tow. So that's a fully electric, uh, over 200 mile range uh, electric tour vehicle. Um, it's geared up for taking um, small groups of people up to up to eight comfortably in, in a bit of luxury. So I like to sort of um, yeah, think of it as, as some green luxury. Um, so so that's that's really exciting and we're looking forward to to receiving that um, to beginning of February, I'm told. Um, the other thing that's exciting that, that um, we, we hope to do with the produce, um, we currently make it out of kitchen in our home. Um, we're looking to expand that into a commercial kitchen um, so we can do we can do more around the tours in terms of bringing people there and do demonstrations. And the reason I've got the, the, the picture you see with, with Annalise modeling our uh, aprons is in the background. Again, it's the Brock of Bercy. So um, we've, we've taken ownership of some barns just to the, to the right of that picture. They're out of shot and we're going to be um, converted. So we've got architects looking at it now. So we're going to use the existing building. So it's again, it's green. We're going to look at things like um, the, the facilities and make sure everything like that's green. We've got uh, renewables um, that, that are in mind um, for, for the, the energy. Um, but the setting itself is brilliant. You've got the Earl's Palace just behind, um, which, which is a, a 16th century uh, ruin. Uh, there's the tidal island over to the Brock of Bercy, which has got Pictish and Viking remains there. Um, so it's a beautiful area and it's well visited um, by tourists. So, so our idea is we'll, we'll create, a, it's going to be like a muddy boot cafe visitor centre. Uh, people can come, great views. We can also benefit the local community with employment um, and also um, a, a function space. So, so, so for local events, um, we can we can work on that um, and tell the story of, of some of the history that's that's here. And again, it'll link into the UNESCO trail because everything in Orkney is quite close. It's not the biggest uh, island in the world. It's about twenty six miles um, east to west. So you can imagine it's everything sort of close by so for us we can we can bring our tours we can go to the heart of neolithic orkney and then continue the story um so so that's that's really exciting um and we're, we're sort of aiming for 2023 um the, the builder did sniff me a little bit when i said that about 2024 but we'll, we'll set a target so so that's really exciting so um i hope that's give you a bit of insight into us and the work we're, we're doing and um yeah I've, any questions um Please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Paul. That was really, really interesting. I really liked hearing about the journey that Jane and you have taken uh, of your business, uh, living the dream in Orkney, uh, island life, absolutely to be recommended. And I thought particularly how you are interacting with local businesses and the growth and the involvement of the business. Uh, which then led to your green accreditation as well and learning from that and, and crucially how that makes commercial sense as well. And I thought your picnic lunch is a great example, uh, continuing the story and telling the history of Orkney, um, working with other tour companies too. And congratulations on your green luxury Mercedes. Uh, who yeah, would have thought? I <laughs> Green is the new everything. 
So I'm going to hand over to Keith Patterson of Visit Scotland now, uh, who will facilitate the Q&A session. If I can Hi, Douglas. introduce Keith. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Douglas. Thanks, Paul. Um, and Paula, we um, had a couple of comments in here. Uh, one from Kath at Speyside Wildlife, Paul, saying they, uh, she really enjoyed the treats from your doorstep in August last year, which is fantastic. Thanks, Kath. And we have, um, <laughs> that's great, a question from Esther at uh, Galloway Cycling Holidays um, to yourself, Paula. Uh, found the stats really interesting, the consumer stats. Just wondered if they are able to be shared um, wider um, from your, your presentation. Yeah, that would be fine, Keith. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the presentation deck and I'll add in that that as an actual additional slide with those percentage um, piece information. And then that deck will be published um, on, on the toolkit. I should have mentioned actually within my presentation, we're putting together a dedicated update to the travel trade part of the two. We're adding a travel trade part within the toolkit within Scotland's UNESCO Trail Toolkit that's got all of the information on how to update listings, where to find the photography, but we can put the, that statistical information into the presentation deck, no problem Esther, that's fine. Superb. Um, Timothy's come in with a question again, think for yourself Paula, just saying how great to hear about the, uh, the trail and the opportunities. Um, and how do you see Adventure Tourism and Outdoor Scotland project um, reimagining how we bring visitors to the Scottish outdoors and then a comment about um, the North Coast 500. I don't know if you've seen that one there, but that was just from Timothy um, yeah. to yourself, Paula. Yeah, so I this trail wasn't developed to to have an impact on any of the other trails that were already available either globally or within Scotland. It was because with there was it was seen that we could leverage the profile and the reputation of the better known designations against the lesser known designations. So it, the key motivation for it was around visitor dispersal. So it's that the the sum is greater than the parts. Um, if you put all of the thirteen designations into one proposition for a consumer, it's a very compelling reason to put Scotland higher up on your wish list because these are designations of excellence, they're globally significant and they're completely unique to Scotland. So it, it wasn't done within the context of being um, an alternative to NC500 or anything anything connected to South West Coastal 300 or the, the um, Mori, I think there's, a, there's one in Mori of 300. In particular, sustainable travel options are important within the narrative within this, which is that we want people to think about how they're experiencing it. You know, is there an option to travel in between designations using trains or other sustainable modes of transport or using tour operators that particularly advocate around that piece? So those are important things that we've in, incorporated in. In terms of the work that's currently been done on the Outdoor Scotland project as part of the reimagining, so we are actually in contact with both um, Fergus and also Stuart Walker who are running that national project and they're very aware of Scotland's UNESCO trail. Adventure tourism is obviously very important with the island, within the islands communities, but actually it's important across every designation that's in Scotland. So we want people to have real live experiences in natural environments. So we see the trail as being able to support um, the adventure tourism sector as well if the right products are put together and there's an alignment with the UNESCO values and the Scotland's UNESCO trail um, from a marketing context as well. So hopefully, does that answer your questions, oh. Tim? And really nice to see you, by the way. I've not seen you for ages, so sorry I didn't. I didn't recognise you using your Sunday name of Timothy, <laughs> but it's <laughs> lovely to see you. Super. That's all the questions at the moment, uh, Paula and Paul and Douglas. Okay. I think, will we give it another minute or so, just in case there's any additional questions that come in from anyone? I think you made a lot of good points there, uh, Paula, and Paul had some very good examples of the uniqueness of, of this and we always like to think of Scotland as a unique country and then we think of other countries that are unique too and we want to go and visit. But this is in particular something that 
can really draw people to Scotland as being somewhere even more special, internationally acclaimed, etc. Yeah. yeah, there's one final question that's come in from Thomas Miller, and it's a it's a very good one. So, um, our partnerships team at Visit Scotland are currently in discussions and uh, partnership discussions with a range of key operators. So, ScotRail is a key transportation partner on the trail. They are developing a UNESCO trail pass which would allow you to travel by bus, by ferry or by train to the 13 designated sites across Scotland. So yes, there are sustainable transport operators in Scotland that we're talking to. And then we're also talking in partnership with Skyscanner. Skyscanners in particular aggregate flight carriers, but they've created and developed a specific piece of searchable code that as a consumer, if you're coming from a European or a long haul destination, you can put this in as a filter within the Skyscanner flight search functionality to offset or to transfer your carbon load so that there's a green option or there's a, they will do a search return on flight carriers that offer that option. So yes, we are looking as to how do we make sure that the integrity of the project that 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 responsible tourism golden thread weaves right the way through it. So yeah, we're we're talking to those transportation yeah. operators and network providers. Do you think that's us, Keith? I think that's us uh, for the moment, Douglas. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I hope everyone found that very interesting and very useful, even though I knew a little bit about the UNESCO trail and some of the places. Uh, I think there's great insight there and lots of new information and definitely go to the web links. Lots of good information there as Paula was highlighting. And the webinar will be made available online in a few weeks, uh, along with the updated toolkit, uh, providing the links and the tools to the assets outlined in Paula's presentation and there's also a video that's been created as part of Scotland's UNESCO trail suite and it's apparently it's a brilliant mini movie entitled UNESCO in Scotland explained. So hopefully you'll have time uh, once that link is up. It's about six minutes long and well worth a watch. So on behalf of Visit Scotland, on behalf of JP Orkney, and the Scottish Destination Management Association and other organisations. Thank you all very much indeed for attending.